Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today we have a new moon in Scorpio reading. So this is an interesting new moon. We've got, first, first of all, it's the first moon that's after the um, heavy energy of October where we had the two eclipses. It is conjuncting Mars in Scorpio. Um, so a very fire base, fire meets water. But it's also opposite Uranus, the great liberator. So expect the unexpected push to get out of our comfort zones um, yeah expect a wild ride full of explosives so we'll uh, we'll we're gonna do my version of a Celtic cross see what uh, see what the messages are and uh, it's quite interesting actually um, in your pre shuffle for it and um, the song that was coming through was um, we can't stop by Miley Cyrus and um, I thought there's something Scorpionic about her I, I have checked in the past um, and I thought she was a Scorpio, but no, it's a moon in Scorpio. So that very much, uh, very, very fitting. Uh, you know, this is our house, this is our rules. <laughs> we can't stop, we won't stop. Okay, so, yeah. Anybody can watch this, whatever the message is for. Thank you once again for all the continued support. It's wonderful, thank you. Uh, there is still a few uh, private reads available, and, and not many, I think, towards the end of the week. Um, there's just a, one or two left. Uh, so if you do want, do check out. Description box has the website link for that. Okay, let's dive in. Let's do three more. Okay, the new moon is Scorpio. We have the Eight of Swords. Okay, the Eight of Swords is Jupiter in Gemini. So the Wheel of Fortune meets the Lovers. So there could be some sort of fated events that is taking place here. But I kind of feel like it's just showing the shadows. We're looking in the mirror here and we're seeing the shadows. But the shadows is actually trying to break us free. So if you look at the crows, they're actually trying to unwind you. They're not trying to tie you, they're trying to unwind you. So this could be a situation here where we're diving deep into shadow work. You know, we are liberating ourselves. Again, I spoke at Scorpio's reading this week, you know, finding their true magic is Scorpionic magic is is turning you know vulnerability into power to in pain into power and um, really transmutation so interesting crossing you root of the matter recent past interesting ooh this is this is chronological is this what you want, what's coming in, how you see yourself, how others see you, advice, and potential outcome. Okay, interesting. We have the Nine of Wands, the Four of Swords, the Two of Swords, the Five of Wands, Seven of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, the Lovers, the Six of Pentacles, Ten of Swords, Six of Cups, Nine of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Justice, and the Three of Wands. Okay, right. There is change that is coming. Um, you could be seeing fives, 55 possibly, um, but we've got nine, 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 nine. Here we've got four nines, um, indicating conclusions of something. You're being asked to complete a cycle here, and I believe it's something that m you might be holding on to, or old ways of being, doing situations. You could be trying to control something, and there's a shift that needs to take place here. It's interesting because the um, when I talk about controlling something, this could be just trying to uh, wanting to know what's next, wanting to know what's next week, what's next month, what's next year, which is all well and good. And I'm speaking of somebody that does readings, um, it is wonderful um, to know, but we've also got to allow as well. And um, it's kind of reminding me of um, so there's a quote. Oh. Decker, Drucker, Decker, Duck, Duck. Peter Ducker, Peter Drucker, Drucker, Drucker. Yeah. 
uh, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So this is possibly like asking you to like just completely decide which direction you want to go, where do you see your future and start moving along that path. So we've got the Eight of Swords, crossing you is the Hermit. The Hermit is a time of introspection. In the crossing position, I would say it's time not to, it's, it's, it's like action time now. In the crossing position, like I say, is, um, um, is, is the waiting period, is the going within, is the seeking the knowledge within, which ties in energetically because I'm jumping ahead, the recent past we have the Nine of Pentacles. Now the Nine of Pentacles is Venus in Virgo. Venus has just left Virgo and moved into Libra. So if we look at Venus in Virgo and we break it down as to two tarot cards, it's um, Venus Empress meets Virgo Hermit. So we're in the crossing position of the Hermit. So the feminine energy of the, the, the Empress, and we all have it, so don't get caught in genders, but is to look within. So Venus in um, um, Virgo, which was pretty much throughout October, has had people, situations, looking within. Root of the matter is the hangman. It's having a different perspective of something, or seeing something clearly. The hangman is about sacrifice. Where have we sacrificed? What are we no longer willing to sacrifice ourselves for? What, what is it that we need to let go of? There's something that just needs to be uh, energetically freed. It's, it could be something, I'm kind of getting the message of Mani Pura in reverse. Bear with me guys. Mani Pura in reverse. Page 53. Okay, Mani Pura, Silver Plexus Chakra. Um, in reverse, it is easy to lose sight of who you are when the world is pulling you in a million directions. When solar plexus is low, you feel unsure about what it is you really want. Take some time apart from others, especially those who are trying to direct your path and figure out who you are outside of everybody else. Explore new topics, read new books, travel to new places, immerse yourself in new cultures. It is time for you to unlearn all that you learned so you can become all that you are. Pretty much sums this reading up. So what you want is the Nine of Cups. You want the wheel to spin. It's it's uh, Jupiter in Pisces. So it's the hangman meets the wheel of fortune. Uh, wheel of fortune meets the hangman. Delayed blessings. You want those delays to finish. You want that to be over. What's coming in is the Five of Cups. Now the Five of Cups is a kind of disappointment and, um, and sort of depressive energies, but it, for me it's the time frame. We are currently with Mars in Scorpio. So this is something about Mars in Scorpio. Mars, this new moon in Scorpio is conjuncting Mars. Mars is action, Mars is energy, Mars is the solar plexus. It's knowing what you want and going for it. It's the god of war, it's knowing when to take action. How you see yourself is the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is somebody that's burdened, that's had enough of the current situation. If this is a relationship, something is building up and it's just too much. If this is work related or we're giving a power away to anything, anything this can be, the universe is asking you to assess how long can you continue doing this. It's Saturn in Sagittarius, so the world meets temperance. Where do we need to find balance? How others see you is judgment. The others see you as somebody that has... This, for me, this feels like you... Even if, you're, even if you're awakened to a certain degree, there's still different levels. This could be getting out of, this This could be dramatic, you know, Uranus, the Liberator, this could be dramatic awakenings. This could be shifts in all areas of your life. And people see you have changed. It's also reminding me of um, um, Aries' reading for this week, that which we did last week, uh, this last week. And it was about no wrong decision but it's like a third go at um, changing directions. If we look at the tarot, your, your card, death card is the first one. That's when everything kind of ends and crumbles and shows you a different way. Then we get the tower and that's a destructive aspect. That just comes in and shifts you into another direction, which you might have done and you might have changed and then you get another option of judgment. At this point, you're in charge and you can continue to shed revealing layers, snake skin, 
you know, peeling away the onion, we can continue to do that process uh, or we can remain where we are, which is comfortable, which is fine. You're being pushed to shed because your advice is the world. The world is what comes after judgment. Card 20, card 21. Card 21 and also being Saturn and you're, you're seeing yourself as Saturn in Sagittarius is finding balance. Is finding what, if, if you're giving too much energy one way, we're out of balance. So we need to beautifully alchemize in the, in the temperance card where we're balancing fire and water. Um, and again, that's the sacral chakra as we move up into the solar plexus. Your outcome is the five of swords. This is change and this is um, Uranus as well. So we've got Venus here in the uh, Virgo energy of the past. And then we've got Venus in Aquarius energy here. So Venus is doing a massive like transformation here. She's going in and in introspective with uh, that Virgo energy. And sometimes with Virgo energy, it can be quite structured. Virgo rules the sixth house of daily habits and you know having the set motions, which is all well and good. It's, it's, it's a wonderful energy, but it can also be constricted. Venus in Aquarius is the complete opposite. Venus meets Uranus, it's, I need freedom. I love you, I need freedom. So there's this delicate balance that temperance is basically asking us to do here. We also have the Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles is Sun in Capricorn. It's holding on too tight to some things, and I kind of feel like that is what's being highlighted here. If you hold on too tight and suffocate things, the Five of Swords, Venus and Aquarius type of energy, it can't survive. So it has to break free. So this could be breaking free from something that's keeping you constricted. Could be anything. Again, doesn't have to be romantic aspects, doesn't have to be work aspects, it doesn't have to be friendship. It could be any, anything that's keeping you seem, seemingly locked in. If you recognize this and you allow those sort of fingers to you know, move away from this, this Percy and we open up our heart, boom, the sun, the final card, uh, and it's the happiest card in the deck. But incidentally, when we do that, that's that mana pura. When we power through the mana pura, we hit the heart. And what happens when the yellow powers through, it hits the green, the heart. So then you have a completely different aspect of life. You are thinking from the heart, you know, living from the heart, action from the heart and um yeah like it's, it's back to we can't stop you know uh, this is your house this is your rules uh, which direction do you want to go interesting so i wanted to look for i want to look for the devil uh, just to see what sort of shadows we need to look at here because we've got the shadows in the eight of swords and then we've got uh, the four of pentacles next to the sun so sun in capricorn next to the sun and the devil is capricorn also, I want to see where the Wheel of Fortune is. <laughs> so the Devil is with the Death card, which is obviously Pluto, um, and it's obviously Scorpio energy here. So you've definitely been shown some shadows here that could come in, uh, but it means taking action. Knight of Swords is taking action. Pluto in Capricorn, we're still here until January the um, 27th, off the top of my head. Um, so there's going to be a lot of action that takes place then, and then when it moves into Aquarius, uh, I mean every single Capricorn will be breathing a sigh of relief. Um, I can guarantee that. I can tell you that first hand as well. Um, so yeah, there's a big, big shift that's taking place here. And I do like to see that. We've got the Magician next to the Hierophant. So the Magician next to the Hierophant <coughs> is um, it's, it's, it's the perfect balance of the Devil. Card one, card five equals 15. The devil's energy in its positive <clears throat> is success, it's passion, it's determination. It's certainly got the willpower to break through from the solar plexus. So it's good, I like it. Wheel of Fortune, where are you? Oh, temperance, temperance is, that's, <laughs> that's good. It, it seems to be like this reading is linking all of last week's um, readings together. So temperance is what we're, we're aiming for here. Um, with Saturn in in, um, in Sagittarius. Temperance is with the Seven of Wands and the King of Cups. 
The Seven of Wands is rising above the ego. The King of Cups, for me, is speaking of possibly, I think it was Cancer's reading this week, uh, when I said a quote, and I, I've forgotten the, the name of the guy, um, but it was the, the longest distance you'll ever have to travel is from the head to the heart. And it kind of feels like this is what it is here. You're balancing something wonderful. Wheel of Fortune is with the Three of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, turning pain into power. You are turning your pain into power. You are weaving spontaneity and flexibility into your life. You are allowing change to come in. And, um... Ooh, what song is that? So I'm just, I was looking at the, uh, the mountains in the background of the Four of Pentacles, the mountain in the background of the Five of Swords and the mountain in the background of the Ten of Wands. And I heard, I hope, I hope you never fear the mountains in the distance. It's a song. Never settle for the path of least resistance. It's I Hope You Dance by Leanne Womack. The universe is asking you to dance. Dance to the flow of life, dance to the rhythm of the the weaving of the fabric of the universe um, there's wonderful stuff that's coming your way if you're willing to embrace change and go with the flow and uh, allow the dramatic shifts of Uranus to take place okay in the extended I want to see where the sun is leading you we'll take its energy what we need what we did what we know what we don't know recent past advice and potential outcome if you can join me fantastic if not let me know if this resonates Gemini uh, Jupiter and Gemini Virgo Pisces so again, we've got like um, a contrast here. Virgo and Pisces, we've got the sixth house, the twelfth house. Um, um, you know, it's duality, the sun, the moon, yin, yang. Venus in Virgo, Jupiter in Pisces, Mars in Scorpio, Saturn in Sagittarius, Scorpio, Libra, Capricorn, Venus in Aquarius, sun in Capricorn, Leo, moon in Sagittarius, Jupiter in Libra, moon in Libra, Saturn in Leo, Saturn in Taurus, Gemini, Moon in Taurus, Sun in Gemini, Sun in Scorpio. We have pentacles, we have swords, we have cups, we have wands. Everyone's here, those of you standouts, take care. See you soon. Bye.